In today's video, we're going to be decluttering and reorganising every room in the house. Now, this is my first touch-up declutter of the year. I got so much done in a really short space of time and I can't wait to take you along and show you how I did it. For anyone new to my channel, I have been on a mission to take back control of my space because we were just overrun with stuff. And at the beginning of the year, I took on some mammoth decluttering challenges. I cleared out my entire kitchen and when I say every cupboard and drawer in that room was so full I could barely open them, I'm not joking. I also transformed my nightmare bedroom cupboard into a space I now adore. Think Monica Geller's secret shame closet and you'll get an idea of just how bad that was. You'll be able to find both of those declutters on my decluttering playlist here. They're both really satisfying to watch if I do say so myself. But anyway, now that I've done that, I don't want to fall back into old habits or ever let it get that bad again. So I made a promise to myself that I'd do four maintenance declutters a year. One in January, one in March, April time, which is the one we're doing now, one in June, July time, and one in October, November time in preparation for Christmas. So today we're going to go room to room and tackle some of the problem areas, have a bit of a reorganise, reduce the amount of clothes and toys, and just purge the space a little bit. Just a heads up here that this is my longest video to date, so make sure you get a drink and get comfy. And if you're gonna be cleaning and decluttering alongside me, I'll be here chatting away as your body double and I'll keep you company every step of the way. So naturally, I thought it was best to start in the kitchen. I don't know why, but that just felt like the most logical place to start. And then with each room, I started by making a mental note and then honing in on specific areas or places that needed attention. So for the kitchen, one of the places was the top of the fridge. And I know a lot of people will be very happy I'm finally sorting that because I didn't in the last video. And some people were not impressed. <laughs> I also wanted to clear out and clean the fridge ready for the food shop. Same for the big food cupboard. By the way, yes, bubbles and sweets are still remaining firmly on top of the fridge, out of reach. <laughs> it always seems like such a fun idea to get the bubbles out, doesn't it? Starts off great. I'm blowing the bubbles and the kids are running around popping them. Everyone's having a great time. And then one of them decides they want to do it themselves. Can't figure out how to actually blow a bubble. Gets frustrated and then the mixture ends up on the floor. Same scenario every single time. And I can't be bothered with sticky floors at the minute, so we'll wait till it's sunnier and they can do it in the garden. Anyway, back to what I was saying. I'm ashamed to say that both of the drawers need quite a big declutter again. And it was only, what, two months ago since I did my kitchen declutter? But I'm holding on to the fact that they're nowhere near as bad as last time. And then the final place I wanted to sort in this room was the cleaning cupboard. Everywhere else was still in pretty good shape, so I was very happy with that. So yeah, if you're feeling overwhelmed or demotivated and you need a kick up the bum to get you started, I hope this video can do that for you. If you're anything like me and you really struggle with motivating yourself to get things done, or your motivation ebbs and flows at certain times of the month, you are absolutely not alone. Those were chocolate coins at the bottom of the fridge drawer there. My partner Charlie is one of those strange people who stores his chocolate in the fridge. I don't get it. Sometimes he'll even put it in the freezer, although I do that with a Kinder Bueno because I love the inside all crunchy. But I'm definitely a chocolate in the cupboard kind of girl. Maybe I'm the weird one, I don't know. What's the consensus? Should you store chocolate in the fridge or the cupboard? Anyway, I've gotten distracted and gone on my first tangent of probably many. But back to what I was saying... I know when I'm lacking motivation, a marathon cleaning or decluttering video really gives me a boost. For some reason, watching someone else do it really helps. For so many of us, motivation for mundane tasks and household chores just doesn't come organically. And I think a lot of us spend huge chunks of our lives waiting for motivation to just apparate out of thin air. I know I'm definitely guilty of putting things off and avoiding things because I had this belief that one day I'll just wake up with this drive to get things done. And this is just not how it works, unfortunately. I found that it's actually action that manufactures motivation, as strange and counterproductive as that sounds. You've got to push yourself past that initial mental block, and motivation and momentum will build when you start to do the thing. 
So yeah, let's work together and get whatever it is that you need to get done, done today. Or over a few days, depending on how big the task is that you've got ahead of you. You can always save the video and watch it in smaller chunks. I know not everyone has the time to watch a 43 minute long video in one go. Life's hectic. But I've actually split this video into smaller chunks for you. I like to do that with most of my videos now. So every time I'm about to move on to a new room, there's a little pause and an introductory header. And that's a great opportunity to have a break or get a drink or pause to come back later on. Mostly though, I break the video up to give people a five second rest from my infernal chattering. I know it can get a bit intense for some. Will I stop though? No. Because I know for every person that gets annoyed by my chattering, there are 10 people that find it therapeutic. And I find it therapeutic too. It's like letting it all out on the phone to a friend while you're getting your stuff done. And I know that you're nodding along and chatting away in your own way too. I might not be able to hear you back, but that doesn't matter. As long as I know that I'm helping you get through something, that's all that matters to me. So here, I'm just trying to clean up the cupboards a little bit. Unfortunately, because these cupboards are made of cheap material, they're never going to look fully clean. There are loads of grease marks that have kind of permeated the wood. I don't think it's actually wood. Anyway, whatever it is, they're never going to look fully clean. And because we're renting, it's just something I have to put up with until we get a home of our own, one day. I'm actually determined we'll be on the housing ladder within five years. That's a massive goal of mine. If you watch some of my really early videos, which are the videos with the pink writing on the thumbnails, I actually spoke about how I dreamed that this channel might allow for that one day, might get us on that path. And I like to speak about that kind of stuff on here too, because I don't just consider this channel to be a cleaning channel. I see it as a self-development channel too, and a lot of other things. But anyway, when I spoke about that, it was back when I had under 5,000 followers. I spoke about how I'd love to be able to put a deposit down on a house or pay for my dad's laser eye surgery one day and just get out of the cycle of eating into what little savings we had each month because our wages just didn't cover the bills. And I told you that I'd be transparent with it all and take you along for the journey. So I wanted to give a little update there because it's been almost a year since I had my first ever video go viral, kind of viral, and since so many of you found this channel. So, I think it was around May 2023, I made a video called How to Tidy When You're Overwhelmed, where I showed you one of my methods on how to clean a huge mess in the fastest and most efficient way possible. And that video reached an amount of people that I didn't even believe was possible for a small creator. At the time I had around 5,000 followers and I watched that video hit a million views within a month. I'd only just started the channel in January and that one video catapulted it to the point that I got major imposter syndrome. It was madness. I think it's something like 60,000 of you followed and are here because of that one video. Anyway, that one video allowed me to monetize my channel, which was not the ultimate goal. I've spoken so many times about why I made this channel and who I make these videos for. But being able to earn a little bit from them is definitely a bonus and it's something that I hoped might happen. Because it takes a lot of time and effort and heart to make each one and I really do put my all into every single video. I hope that shows, by the way. But yeah, after messing up the application process in true Remy form, after another two months I think, so since July 2023, I've been able to earn a little money from my videos. And since then, I've been able to save for driving lessons that I've wanted to take for so long now. I'm 31 and I haven't taken a driving lesson since I was 18, when I failed miserably three times. But I've almost reached that goal. I'm able to finally contribute to our shared savings. And that means one day down the line, we might hopefully be able to put a deposit down on a family home. I'm able to help out friends and family members when they're struggling at the end of the month, which so many people are at the minute. I'm able to take my boys on trips out occasionally without dipping into my overdraft. Unarranged overdraft, by the way, the one that charges you for every day you're in it. And I have a little folder where I'll put a little, and by a little I mean £10 here and there, but I'll put a little aside each month for my dad's laser eye surgery or my boy's junior ices. If you don't know what they are, they're savings accounts that they can't tap into until they're 18. And I'm telling you all of this firstly because I want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. 
you guys choosing to come back to this channel again and again and the fact that you enjoy these videos has absolutely changed my life. Little spider in the cupboard there. I've recently learned something that absolutely broke my heart. Apparently, when you put a house spider outside, it can't cope with the change in temperature and it dies. So even if you think you're saving a spider by putting it outside, you're actually not. So I just let them wander around the house now. But yeah, your continued support and encouragement for this channel has stopped my family from struggling. It really has. But secondly, I just want people to know that if you're on the fence about starting a channel or putting yourself out there, I say make hay while the sun shines. At the moment, we're in a timeline in which normal, everyday people are able to change the trajectory of their lives through social media. Who knows how long that will last? And if you've been thinking about starting, it's worth the risk to try. You've only got one life, and the worst that can happen is it doesn't work out. Irrespective of being able to make a side income, Creating these videos has positively affected my life in so many other ways too. Helping people is what makes my soul happy. Being creative is what makes my soul happy. And there are no limitations. You can make videos about a myriad of different things. And the beauty of life is that there are people out there who will resonate and enjoy them. We're all so different and you are free to be completely yourself. And yeah, I'm just so ridiculously grateful that that video struck a chord with so many of you and that you went on to enjoy so many others that are posted. And I'm going to stop talking about it in a minute and actually talk about what's going on in the video, but I just wanted you to know that I'll continue to keep you updated every now and then because I want to be a source of motivation. If a normal, everyday woman who works at Asda and makes cleaning videos in her PJs can get a silver plaque on YouTube, you absolutely can too. Okay, so we're on to the downstairs toilet. Now, I've actually never gone through and decluttered this room before. And we've lived here nearly six years. And it's just because I've never really felt the need to. We don't really keep too much stuff in here. The drawers by the side of the toilet have always just had random stuff smushed in there. We don't really use them. But I want to change that today. Just because the room doesn't have a lot of stuff doesn't mean we can't make it neater and actually find specific uses for the drawers. You can never have too much storage space. The sink's looking a bit grim because the boys were painting while I was decluttering the kitchen. Did you notice I found a Pokemon magazine while I was cleaning the top of the fridge? Well, I thought, why not let them paint the little figurines in that while I get this done? And they got paint everywhere. Anyway, I found that after I finished clearing and reorganising in here, that even though it didn't look outwardly very different, I sighed the biggest sigh of relief. Because I think maybe on a subconscious level, even just this small amount of chaos and disorder was affecting me and stressing me out more than I realised. There are certain things that come naturally to some people that don't to others. And it can be a real source of insecurity and can make people feel really low. For me personally, being able to create and stick to habits around the home is a big one. Just one example for you, we have never had one of those toothbrush holders. Such a simple thing that helps with hygiene and keeping everything in the right place. And I've just never thought to get one. Or I have thought about it and then I've gone out and forgotten. By the way, this drawer was just crammed with pregnancy and ovulation test wrappers from when I was trying for Ike. Just shows how long it's been since I've actually gone into these drawers. But yeah, the toothbrushes are always laid across the sink or crammed into the cupboard. And even though I didn't have an actual toothbrush holder on hand today, I thought, do you know what? I'm just going to use a mug from the kitchen as a practice one. And then I'm going to get one and a rail for a hand towel and a toilet roll holder. Do you see what I mean though when I say to most people getting these things would just be second nature. There wouldn't even be a question about it. But for some of us it isn't that simple because these kind of things just don't even register in our brains. <laughs> Something that was often used to describe me was that I was very clever but I had absolutely no common sense or life skills. And it's true. I've got no sense of direction. I wouldn't be able to direct a stranger to my local Morrisons, even though I go there every week. And just hold that thought a moment, because we've finished the second room and that looks so much better. And now we're on to the living room. We're just going to go from one room to the next room in this video. I know I often do the rooms in order of priority, but I didn't feel like it this time. This time I just wanted to sweep through the house, not zigzag through it. 
And for this room, my main focus was reducing the amount of toys in the toy box. There are so many duplicates in here. Like Ike has about five police cars and they're all pretty much the same. There are also loads of tiny finicky parts to toys that we can't find all the pieces for. And I want those gone because they just make instant mess and they hurt your feet. And then I'm just going to sort through the drawers under the telly. Because they often get crammed with Rudy's drawings and other bits and bobs when we're in a rush. Anyway, back to what I was saying about my lack of common sense and basic life skills. I struggle, as you know, <laughs> to organise my schedule or my house properly. I used to get lost on my own estate growing up. Failed my driving test driving out of the test centre car park on the wrong side of the road. I've almost gotten run over several times in my life because I daydream so much. I often forget to text people back or keep in communication with people. I get so overwhelmed with that and I feel like an awful friend a lot of the time. But I can tell you the Latin names for most insects. I can tell you all about childhood development and attachment theory. I can tell you an unusual amount about human ailments and viruses and medicines and how they function in the body. I can paint you a decent portrait, write you a gripping story. I'm a fair singer. I know a lot about politics and conflicts and the warning signs of history repeating itself. But I'll often forget my clothes have been sat in the washing machine all day. I'll often forget to shower and brush my teeth. Can't clean up as I go along to save my life. And I don't know if anyone will relate here, but sometimes I still feel like a teenager who hasn't really figured out a lot of simple things yet. Things that could make daily life a lot easier. And I just want to feel like a functional adult who has everything organised and on hand. And you know what? I'm getting there. And I'm sure you'll have seen that. On this channel, you're literally watching me grow and figure things out in real time. And I really hope following along and watching me figure it out is helping some of you too. I know some of the behaviours I've discussed are really, really common in neurodivergent people. And a lot of the time when it comes to cleaning channels and tidying hacks... And just general life and organisation advice, that isn't taken into account. That not everyone's brain works in the same way, not every method is going to work for every person. You can suggest pick up as you go along and stick to routine and tidy at night after the kids have gone to bed to a person with ADHD until you're blue in the face. All you're going to do is make them feel guilty and incompetent. Another one that people never really take into account is that when a parent has ADHD, say, it's very likely their children do too. And so this comment of, your problem is your children don't pick up after themselves and if you just taught them to tidy up their mess, your house would be tidy, it's just so frustrating. Because it's more complex than that. It's not that we aren't trying to teach and to guide. We know keeping on top of our homes are important. We know that learning and absorbing things from a young age is optimal. But let's maybe consider that the parent is not the only person who's forgetful and spacey and who struggles with things around the house. And that actually, they're doing a really good job trying not only to manage their own messiness and spaciness and executive dysfunction, but managing a host of other people's too. That can be very overwhelming. What I'm saying is simple things aren't always simple for everybody. And I really resent, actually, this idea that messy and unorganised people are the way they are simply because they just don't know any better. They need to make things a habit or they just aren't trying hard enough. Not only is that incredibly insulting and patronising, it's just plain wrong most of the time. Knowing something, knowing what needs to be done, and actually implementing that knowledge are two completely different things. So something that's been very important to me on my journey of making cleaning content is to accrue a portfolio, as you will, of different methods that have actually worked for me around the house and that might work for other people with minds that are similar to mine. And it's important for me to relay what I've learnt in a light-hearted and non-judgmental way. Because for a lot of people, they've already gone through life being criticised left, right and centre. And that kind of stuff sticks with you. It becomes an inner voice. And I want to take that voice, that anxiety, that knot in your stomach and soothe it. Neurodivergent or not, we're all continuously learning and figuring things out and that never stops. 
each one of us is a work in progress. Who wants to have everything figured out anyway? The world would be a very boring place. I would like to be able to find my shoes more easily each morning though. <laughs> anyway, we're on to the boys' room now and as you can see, this is definitely the room that needed the most work. I actually did a huge declutter of this bedroom six months ago and that video is also on my channel. It's one of the videos with the blue writing in the thumbnail and it's called How to Declutter When You're Overwhelmed. But anyone with kids will know that clutter just seems to follow children with Christmas and birthdays. It's easy to end up back at square one, especially when you leave it too long between declutters, which I will not be doing again from now on. We started off by going through Rudy's costumes. Rudy absolutely loves to dress up as different characters and he has amassed a massive amount of costumes. He still wears most of them. He loves to put one on and put some music on and then run around and imagine he's in some kind of parallel universe or story of his own wondrous creation. But the bag's getting a bit full. So I suggested we find 10 costumes to donate. And he was very happy with that, bless him. I always explain when I'm decluttering with the kids that the toys they hardly or never play with could make another child so, so happy. And I've never had a complaint. They know that they are very lucky and that not every child is as fortunate. Even Ike, my two-year-old, knows that some of his old toys are having a turn at another child's house now. And he simply says, OK, and then toddles off on his merry way. Speaking of Ike, I just wanted to update you on that situation. I know there's been quite a long break between this video and my last. Well, it was partly because the kids had two weeks off school, life was hectic, and I wanted to spend quality time with them. As I said earlier, making these videos takes a lot of time, especially the voiceovers, and I don't want to rush and produce shoddy content. But I've also been waiting on blood tests for Ike. I did mention that briefly in the last video. I have been an absolute nervous wreck and I was struggling to get myself to do much of anything at all to be honest. I even had to have a few days off work because I was just inconsolable with stress and worry. Thank God for Charlie for being my rock. And thank you to my mum and stepdad for listening to me ask the same questions day in day out. They work for the NHS you see. But basically he had swollen lymph nodes in his neck that had been raised for a good six weeks which is obviously quite concerning, so we had to have some tests done. And after an agonising wait, all is well. I'm sure you could have guessed that anyway from the tone of my voice, but I am so relieved and happy. And I'm excited to get back to work on making a lot more videos. Mainly the garden transformation video. I have been filming that now since last March. And I'm going to be putting all of my energy into getting that finished, and I cannot wait. Anyway... As you can see here, I wanted to give the bookshelf a good sort out. And even more so, the shelf above it. That's become a place we just stash Rudy's Lego and Connects creations. But it's a bit of a shambles. Everything just gets plonked on there and kind of balanced on top of one another. Mainly because it's where we put things to keep them out of Ike's reach. The amount of creations Rudy's made that he's just left on the floor and then Ike's just come up and destroyed them. It's not good. It takes a split second. Always ends in tears because Rudy will spend hours making something bless him. But despite being reminded over and over again, he just never remembers to put them somewhere I can't get to them. So yeah, I wanted to spend some time on making this section of the room a bit more visually appealing. Because when everything's in its rightful place, this room is such a nice and joyful space. This is another reason I want to keep up with the declutters and keep the amount of toys at a manageable level. It only takes a couple of minutes for this room to become a pigsty and I'm sure so many other parents can relate. And it's fine, the kids are being kids, they're playing, they're enjoying themselves. Problem is, it might only take a minute to create the mess but it can take an hour or so to clean it up. On the occasions it gets really bad. Decluttering and organising can split that time in half. And that means I have the energy and drive to do it more often. And that means the kids actually want to spend time in their rooms each day. Because even though they make the mess, in the past, when the room's gotten into a state, and I've had other priorities around the house and had to leave it for a few days, because the kids struggle to clean that much mess up on their own. 
But even they don't want to go in there and play again when you can't see the floor or move around properly. So yeah, decluttering, buying more containers and finding homes for everything has been the solution to a lot of my problems. Now, do not get me started on this top bunk. If you saw my how to declutter when you're overwhelmed video, you'll know just how long I spent clearing it. Because it had become another storage area. No one sleeps on there at the moment, but I hate people chucking stuff on there. It just looks horrible. And imagine my surprise when I moved some of the teddies only to reveal some of the things I'd decluttered six months ago back up there. There was an old guitar, a bag of clothes, and a few other things that I'd put aside for Charlie to take to the tip and the charity shop and put in the attic. And yes, I did throw a tantrum, rightly so I think. And we've had a long chat. I explained that it might not seem like a big deal to him, but it has a massive impact on my mental health. I've been putting so much into these declutters and I don't drive so I'm not able to nip things to the tip or to the donation point. And I'm not tall enough to get into the attic, even with the ladders. So I'm relying on him after all of my hard work to do his part and just take them in a timely manner. I don't want them cluttering up the halls. And I absolutely don't want to find, six months down the line, that you've buried them under a bunch of teddies like a squirrel. It's a good job he's an angel in every other aspect of life. And he is. I might moan occasionally, but I think you all know by now just how much I adore him. For his few faults, he's kind, he's generous, he's emotionally intelligent. He genuinely is one in a million and I am incredibly lucky. I think anyone who follows me on Instagram will see that these cleaning videos only give a small insight into our life as a family and as a couple. So you guys here might see the messy house and listen to my rambles and naturally you'll draw your own conclusions and fill in the blanks. But honestly, I think each of my social media accounts will paint a different picture. And I think it's important to remember that we only know a person online as much as they invite us to know. And I like to highlight that fact on here a lot when talking about people with pristine homes or flashy cars who go on these extravagant holidays or have seemingly perfect relationships that can sometimes make us feel a bit bad about ourselves. We do not know what their lives are like behind closed doors. By the way, I got this bean bag from Amazon and it's one of the ones you can fill with teddies instead of the polystyrene balls. And I just thought it was such a good idea because we have so many sentimental teddies. Ones that were bought when the kids were born and loads that have other special meanings. So I thought instead of piling them onto the bed, we can use them to fill a bean bag. We did get rid of some of them, but that way we can hold on to the rest. The boys can get them out whenever they want and they can still be stored out of sight in a nice little compact way. But yeah, when it comes to social media things might not be as happy and perfect as they're made to seem. And that's why I try to be an open book and be honest with my struggles. Or have a rant when Charlie's gotten on my nerves not taking the bins out. Or let you know when someone's mean comments hurt my feelings. Because <laughs> at the end of the day, people on social media are just regular humans too. We shouldn't be putting them on a pedestal. Or anyone for that matter. Because their shh also stinks. Do you know what I mean? Anyway, if you're one of the people that listen along and don't actually watch the screen, I have changed clothes and hairstyles because we are now on day two of this declutter. So on day one, I managed to get the kitchen, the downstairs toilet, the living room and a section of the boys' room done. And then on day two, I started again where I left off in the boys' room. But I think all of that for day one is fantastic, especially considering how long the declutters have taken me in the past. So what I'm doing here is putting all of Rudy's drawings into his drawings folder. I came up with this idea when I did the first declutter of their room. He's a budding little artist and I cannot stand to throw away his art. So I decided to put it all into a folder. That way it's protected and not scattered all over the house. Because it used to be everywhere. Anywhere you could find paper, in cupboards, drawers, you'd find about 20 of his drawings. Anyway... He's about to turn eight and this folder is getting very full. So I've decided to put the last of his drawings into this folder, label it ages five to seven, and then we're going to start a fresh folder for any new drawings going forward. I just think it's going to be lovely to be able to look back and see how his art shifts and transforms over the years. Anyway, 
Back to what I was saying about how long it takes to do a declutter. I remember when my kitchen was so bad, it took a few weeks to declutter everything. I think it was a few weeks. It was definitely longer than a week. Because the clutter was so bad, I had to split it into sections. I kept getting overwhelmed. I had to keep going back to it. It was honestly horrendous. So I was so chuffed two months later to be able to come back and not only get the kitchen done, but two other rooms fully decluttered in the same day. To me, this just shows it works. And that maintenance declutters like this are so important. They will quite literally save you days of your time down the line. I think decluttering is like a muscle you have to develop too. You use it or lose it. You have to practice and be consistent and be disciplined. Reminding yourself that you don't actually need this. And no, you won't use that down the line. Stop holding on to things. You have to remember just how much easier life is when you don't have so much stuff. How much easier it is to keep things tidy and find things. Decluttering is not just a once a year and then it's done job. For me, it's going to be a quarterly thing. For others, it might be an everyday thing. But I definitely hope that with each declutter, it takes less and less time to do the whole house. Here is photographic evidence of Charlie and my dad putting the things into the attic. (laughs) Just wanted to include that in the video. (laughs) But yeah, this declutter in total took me three days. And I hope next declutter in the summer takes maybe two, two and a half. I'm not expecting miracles. I just want to see slight progress each time. So the last thing I wanted to sort through in this room was this little set of drawers. I had originally intended it to be for all the boys' crafts and art supplies. But it kind of got pushed down the side of the bunk bed because I thought it looked neater there. And then it was forgotten about. So what I wanted to do here was figure out what was going into each drawer and then label them. So that way it's clear for the boys and we won't just whack stuff in willy-nilly. This is a big problem in our home. We smush things into drawers and then never know where to find anything. And oftentimes it can actually stop us from doing certain activities because it just becomes more trouble than it's worth. By the time you've found what you're looking for, you've lost all enthusiasm for what it was you were planning on doing. And I hate that. I don't want that for my children. I want them to be able to find what they're looking for and to not remember every activity as being stressful or uh, let's do it another day when we have more time. It's not fair. There are some aspects of parenthood that really do make me feel inadequate and guilty. And I guess I am in some aspects inadequate simply because of how my brain's wired. In other areas, I'm above average in my parenting. It's the same for us all. I think it's important to recognise all the positive things you bring to the table too. I'm unusually patient for one. I'm enthusiastic, I'm accepting, I'm laid back, I like to share my knowledge and laugh and tell stories. And where I lack, I constantly strive to do better for my boys. But there are things like this, where we can't find stuff, or I'll put off certain activities because I know it's going to make a giant amount of mess and if I'm feeling burned out that day, I know I won't have the energy to clean it all up, which will cause a spiral of mess that will last for days and sometimes weeks. And my kids deserve better than that too. Even just simple things, noise and certain textures make me overstimulated. And on those occasions I sometimes freeze and I can't get myself to get up and do anything. This is where Charlie and I make the perfect team because he's always there to pick up my slack. And I for him. By the way, you didn't think I was going to leave that without putting the colours back in the right order, did you? Never. But I say all this because parenting's hard and we all have our flaws and the guilt is real. But I always like to remind people who are worrying about whether or not they're a good parent. If you're worrying about it this much, you probably are. And you're probably doing better than you think. That's not to say we shouldn't always try to be the best version of us we can be for our kids. But we can't always be perfect. Some days are just going to be meh. And if you've had a bad parenting day today, maybe you said no to the park when you probably could have gone. Those were all the bags we got from this room, by the way. And we're on to the hallway now. All we're doing here is we're sorting through that wash basket to reduce the amount of clothes. But yeah, maybe you chucked a microwave meal in instead of cooking from scratch. Maybe you let them have too much screen time. 
Maybe you work from home like me and you don't feel like you gave your kids enough one-on-one attention. I work outside of the home at Asda, but YouTube is also a job for me now too. And I find it incredibly hard to navigate that work-life balance, especially when the lines aren't so clear-cut when you're working from home. I even get mum guilt from burning those candles that you see there. Even though having them on whilst I'm cleaning really spurs me on and brings me joy. Knowing that they could be putting out toxins into the air that my children breathe makes me so stressed. And now I pretty much only burn them when the kids are out of the house. But anyway, just remember, if you feel like you could have done better today, that tomorrow's a new day and a fresh start. And my voice is croaking because I have been talking for 35 minutes straight. (laughs) Anyway, what I'm doing here is separating the clothes into piles. We've got a keep pile, a donate pile, an odd sock pile, which I'll sort later, and then a pile of clothes that my boys wear home from my mum's every time they stay there, and she wants them back which is a good thing for me because we've got too many clothes. But I do tell her every single time, put them back into the clothes I sent them in. Because I will lose your clothes. (laughs) Ah well, I do love what she sends them in. The clothes are always matching. They're so cute. My mum is adorable. I love her so much. Anyway, as you probably could have guessed, the boys have grown out of so many clothes that were at the bottom of this wash basket. So that made things a lot easier for me. And the hallway is now decluttered. Look how much better that looks. Next up was the bathroom and there was not too much to do in here. I decluttered and got this new storage rack for the back of the door in January. And it's made everything so much less hectic in here. So I just wanted to touch that up a bit and give it a clean. Because I keep lots of bath bombs in here and the boys store all of their slimy toys in the bottom one. What I'm not going to be doing this time though is the three top shelves. They're all of Charlie's things and I would have needed to bring a chair into reach. I only have so much energy and same as with the top of Charlie's wardrobe, as I always say, if I can't reach it, it's none of my business. I was getting tired at this point. We were on to day three and I just wanted it to be over. Did you see me pour sift straight through the grates there? This is what I'm talking about. My brain's not working. What I did next, though, I think was ingenious. Some of the chunks of bath bomb weren't budging. Used the boys' teapot. Worked like a charm. I love cleaning. Between all of the decluttering projects I've had going on and half-term and me being a worrywart, the cleaning has been severely neglected. I'm not going to lie. I've just been doing the bare minimum. And I'm going to be doing some majorly thorough deep cleans in the next few weeks. It's going to be good some satisfying stuff coming up. I think they're just going to be shorts though this time, just to give my vocal cords a break and allow me to focus on filming my big garden project. By the way, I know I don't have to talk in these videos, I'm acting like someone's forcing me, but I like to. It's my thing. Plenty of other cleaning channels who don't talk all the way through. But yeah, I don't want to leave you without content for that whole time, but the long form videos do take a lot of time and work. And I think once I've got them all done, I'll splice them all together to make one big deep cleaning video for you. What do you think? Sounds like a plan to me. I know one thing I need to do and it's unclog both of those bathroom sinks. Ooh, that water floss has just reminded me I am having root canal next Tuesday. Remember when I was telling you about my tooth that had got an abscess on the top? My front tooth? Well, yeah, it's finally happening and I am scared. (laughs) Teeth really freak me out. Just the thought of people looking in my mouth and messing with my teeth. I was talking to the consultant about that, that going to the dentist really freaks me out. Because he could tell I was nervous and he'd asked about it. And I was like, don't a lot of people get nervous at the dentist? And he was like, yeah, but it's usually because of the loud sounds of the equipment or people don't like needles. And then I went on to embarrass myself as usual by telling him and the dental assistant about all the nightmares I have about my teeth crumbling out of my face. I have that dream all of the time where I'll look in the mirror and all of my teeth will just fall out or they'll just crumble into dust. Apparently, it symbolises feeling out of control in some area of your life. So yeah, that checks. (laughs) Anyway, we're on to the final room. Thank goodness, home stretch. And if you're still here with me, I'm going to assume we're best friends now. 
I've become more and more delirious and weird as the time's gone on because I am hungry, but I want to finish this video. My mum's got both the boys for me tonight and once I finish this, me and Charlie are having a takeaway and watching The Gentleman on Netflix. And actually, before we do that, I think I'm going to send him to Morrison's to get me some PJs whilst I have a bath. And that'll be my treat for finishing the longest video I've ever made on YouTube so far. A nice new set of PJs. Cannot wait. But yeah, for this room, same again. Just going through mine and Ike's clothes to see what we can donate. I gave myself the 10 item goal again, just like with Rudy's costumes. If I could get rid of 10 things, I'd be happy. That's per person, by the way, not between us. But yeah, that time at the dentist wasn't the first time I've been really weird to a medical consultant, by the way. I don't know why I keep doing it. When I was about to go in for my C-section with Ike, the consultant anesthesiologist was having trouble putting the cannula in my hand. And it was taking a while, it was a bit awkward, and I went, are you nervous? Because I don't know, I was just trying to <laughs> make him feel more at ease. You know, the man that's had seven years medical training and puts cannulas in all day every day. In my defence, I was a bit unhinged because they don't let you eat anything hours before the surgery. Like, is it 24 hours, 12 hours? Either way, that's a long time for me. And I hadn't slept because I was too excited to meet my baby. But it was very embarrassing, or what I call embarrassing, because I don't really get embarrassed embarrassed anymore. My capacity for embarrassment got filled up years ago. Now I just kind of go, yeah, what did I do that for? And then I just forget about it. If you've ever watched any of my deep cleaning stories on TikTok, you'll know what I'm talking about. They're the pinned videos. The incident with the shoe was the main offender. And then there was the time I had a date at Jimmy's Killer Prawns. I stopped getting embarrassed after that and just accepted I can be very strange in social situations. No point getting embarrassed anyway. For all we know, we could be living inside someone's Sims 2 game. And nothing's real. That's what I like to tell myself sometimes when I'm feeling really stressed or scared about life. And it just comforts me. Anyway, so this is what we managed to bag up from this room. A lot more than 10 items, as you can see. And the last thing we had left to do was put Ike's clothes away and then pair up the socks. Anything we couldn't find a pair for was going in the bin. And yeah, I think overall this was a very successful declutter. I definitely left it feeling so accomplished and proud of myself. Especially knowing that I'd made life in our home just that little bit simpler and easier to maintain. And I really hope you've gotten something out of watching too. If you manage to get something done whilst watching, please let me know. I always love to see those comments and see what you've managed to achieve. And just thank you for being here. I hope you've really enjoyed your time on my channel today. I hope you've had a laugh. I hope you've remembered to be kinder to yourself and more compassionate towards others as well. Now let me speed through these socks because I don't want to keep you much longer. And then we'll quickly have a look at how many bags I managed to get from this room. Unfortunately, I didn't keep track of how many bags we managed to get from the overall house. Overall house? You know what I'm trying to say. But I'm guessing it was about 10. Two more bags from this room though to add to the four from the boys' room. And we're all done and I will see you in the next video, should you choose to return.